Hey everyone, um, today I just wanted to talk about um, about a little bit about mental health and just touch on that subject. Um, once again, I got the headphones on because uh, my last video I said I made a comment about um, about how I might get copyrighted one of these days. Um, and I mean, I know I don't get a lot of views or I don't have like, you know, 8,000 or 100,000 subscribers or, you know, 1 million views, but I still don't want to get a strike against me. Um, Cause as I come out with, if I get like 10 ideas in the next three days, I want to be able to record them, put them out without, without having to, you know, get put in YouTube jail. So um, I think last time I did this uh, with the headphones, um, I couldn't actually hear the music when I watched the video, so um, um, I'd rather have background music going. But um, I know YouTube's got strict, strict, um, strict rules about you know copyrights and all that. So I don't want to. Even if you're live streaming and you walk by a venue that's playing music, they'll they'll copyright your ass. So. Uh, I'm not, I'm not looking to, you know, ruffle any feathers. Um, I mean, if I ruffle somebody's feathers by shit I say, I don't care. Um, so now I need to grab my, where are they right here? Grab my glasses. Whoop. Hey, there's my phone. Okay. Um, so anyways, um, I was just watching one of my favorite YouTubers, um, and she, she fell off the face of the earth like two years ago. And um, I guess when she came out with these final two videos, it was back when I was like completely blind. And um, well, the last one came out, well, yeah, around the time that I went temporarily blind for like another month again. So I missed it. But um, I watched them and she was talking about... Um, the stresses of these are people who actually do YouTube for a living. Um, I'm not looking to do that. Um, <laughs> I'll get by just fine, um, just doing whatever. But um, I, I, I feel for these people because she's the second one that's that's um, discussed needing. Um, or suffering from depression. Well, she said depression and anxiety and the stress of, you know, trying to make a career out of YouTube. And that's and and that's the thing. YouTube's taking a shit, so it's getting harder and harder for people to do. Um, so I congratulate the people that can do it. Um, but I don't condemn those that can't make it happen anymore because there's just it's it's just not really a a feasible art anymore um but the but but the biggest thing she was talking about was um suffering from depression and anxiety and and he needed to go on medication for it and um and now I will never judge anybody for if they go and see a psychiatrist. They get put on medication and it works for them and it's working and it keeps them in a good place. Then I, I can't knock it. All I got to say is in my opinion, I would rather not see somebody take me medicine for, for something like that because, and I'm speaking from experience. Um, I had a shotgun in my mouth six years ago. Um, and I went on, Pro, that was Prozac then. I've been on Prozac. Um, I checked myself into, into the uni bin um, in Missouri in 2016. Um, so three years ago now, almost three and a half years ago. Um, and I came out, came out of there on Zoloft. Um, so I've been on antidepressants and did they help? Yeah. Um, I think I, I was almost suffering from a placebo effect of it, though, um, because I didn't have the means to keep getting those prescriptions refilled, and I, I took them for while I was in there, 
and then for like a month or two after I got out, and then boop, I just stopped doing them. Now, that's not safe to do. Um, I don't need anybody to tell me that. Um, I'm, a, I'm a fucking walking pharmacist. Um, seriously, I know a lot more about medicine than, than most of your normal civilians. Um, you can ask any of my close friends. They know it. Um, I'm literally like a walking doctor or pharmacist, um, but without the degree. Um, and it's just from all the drugs and shit that I've done and I experimenting and researching. That's the thing. A lot of the drugs I've done, I, you know, it's not, I wasn't like, I was like, Oh, let's do some drugs. And when I do drugs or did do drugs, I would, I would research it at the same time. It was kind of like an experiment with myself. So I, it wasn't, I was just doing something willy nilly and that boop, the heroin got, that got out of hand, but, um, it wasn't supposed to get to heroin though. Um, but okay. So back to antidepressants though. Um, and I know a lot of people, okay, let's say antidepressants and anti-anxiety. I know a lot of friends that are on anti-anxiety medicines. Now me, I suffer from high anxiety. I can tell you one thing that doesn't work, <laughs> which I tried for many years, like a whole decade, was drinking. Drinking won't fix it. Um, you can drink as much. You you'll be drinking twenty four seven to try and calm them nerves, and all it does is turn you into a raging alcoholic and just fucking makes your life go. And and it's everything takes a shit. Um, nothing good comes from that. Um. Now, as far as um, medicines for, for anxiety, to me, you're better off learning coping mechanisms to get through stuff and learning to deal with it your own way with your mind, mind, mind over matter. It's, it, 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 there's just different coping mechanisms and coping skills that you need to learn. And you might need to see a professional to get that done. But you're better off that, than saying, here's some fucking Xanax. Because then here's what happens. People are like, oh, I'm taking Xanax now. Okay, well, what happens when um, insur your insurance uh, has a hiccup in it? And, oh, shit, now you don't have that. Now you're like, oh, fuck, I don't have my, I don't, now I don't have my anti-anxiety medicine. Now your anxiety goes <clears throat> through the roof. Now you're like, now you're up shit's creek without a paddle. So you're relying on this crutch that Big Pharma wants you to take and it's helping you out just by medicating you and fucking with, fucking with your brain, your brain chemicals, which you need to be able to regulate on your own. That's the biggest thing is learning how to regulate your brain between meditation, just, uh, vibrational being and everything it's i mean that's this is we get into some real spiritual shit here but um but medicating big pharma medicating and self-medicating don't work there's there's so many natural and healthy ways that you can take care of things that because like i said what what happens is when you take Xanax or Ativan and or you know even just Boost Bar like they prescribed me, it's you you rely you get this dependency on, well I need that in order to make me calm and then if I don't have that then things are ten times worse and when things get ten times worse, that's when shit snowballs. So to me now. This, I'm not going to name who it was, but my one of my favorite YouTubers said that she got put on, you know, antidepressants or med, medicine, medicine. She said she got medicated for, you know, depression and anxiety. It says it's changed her life and made it so much better. She quit YouTube, though, but that was in her farewell video. But and I do have another YouTuber that I follow who has got. He's been on three different antidepressants over the past two years since his divorce and everything. And his, his, you know, bypass surgery and stuff like that. So 
he it took him a while to figure out what it took to get him to where he's at, to where he could be happy and everything. To me, if you can get get to a point where you don't need to rely on big pharma and support that. That global monster puppeteer, it's the, it's such a fucking evil entity. Um, now I'm speaking from the diabetes standpoint on that. Um, but like I said, if, if, you, if you're suffering from anxiety or, or depression, drugs and alcohol aren't going to, aren't going to fucking help you at all. Um, seriously. Um, you can, you can drink till you pass out. You can drink a beer a day. You can drink 17,000 beers a day from sun up to sundown. Just chug from a bottle all day long like I've done before. It's not going to get you anywhere. You can do all the drugs in the world. You can, you know, snort some pills, pop some pills, snort some heroin. You can shoot the shit, which I've never done. You can do some meth, whatever. If it's not going to fucking bring you the happiness. It, it's, it's all altered. It's all altered dopamine and serotonin reactions, which is all an SSRI does for you, which is, you know, Prozac and shit like that. So it doesn't, it doesn't fix the problem. It's slapping a bandaid on something. The solution to depression and anxiety is all in your brain. It's all in your mind. And if you got the heart to do it, you got the willpower to do it. It's all in your head. Now, I mean, sometimes some people really do need medication. Now, someone who's schizophrenic, you can't just say, oh, we'll just overcome that mentally. No, schizophrenia is like literally that's, I mean, you need fucking, you know, parahaladol and shit like that because they got some fucked up shit going on. But if you're just like, I'm sad, I don't want to get out of bed, my life sucks. Get up, go get some sunlight, go for a walk, talk to some people, call me, fucking, I can help you through this shit. Like, depression is really, it's really not as hard to overcome as most people make it seem. Um, and, I, and I've been diagnosed with major depression three fucking times. So, and I'm not talking like, oh, I was kind of depressed. I had a fucking 12 gauge in my mouth. So it's not like, I was just like, oh, I'm kind of depressed. I'm sad. No, trust me. I've, I used to cut myself. I used to fucking, I had a gun in my mouth. You know, I've tried to fucking, I, you know, I was just had suicidal tendencies for years. Um, and, and which ended up just being a wild drug and alcohol addiction. Um, but seriously, like if, if you don't have to rely on a psychiatrist going here, take some medicine, it'll make it be, make you better. No, it's when you, you need, um, CBT, CBT, um, right. Is that what it is? Yeah. CBT, something behavioral therapy, um. I don't know why it's slipping my mind right now. Um, CBT is a, a great thing. Um, just learning coping mechanisms and coping skills, watching videos, talking to other folks that have gone through things and have overcome it. Like I said, talk to me. I'll t I'll t I mean, it took me checking myself into... Took me calling 911 and saying I was going to commit suicide when I wasn't. I just wanted to get into a psych ward. Um, <laughs> but um, I guess I could have went about it a better way. But um, I had a sheriff drive me from Long Lane, Missouri to Springfield. Um, and he was cool as shit. Gave me a cigarette before we went in and everything. He, like, cool as shit. I can't remember his name. Aaron something, I think. Um Worked for the sheriff's department there in Buffalo, I think, um, Dallas County. Um, great dude. Um, but just 
and I had to check myself into that place and do the work. And that's, the, that's the thing. I wanted to go there. I wanted to go there and learn something this time. I wasn't just like, oh, because when I went in there in Philly, that was against my will. I, I had a shotgun in my mouth, and next thing you know, I have a SWAT team outside my apartment, and I'm like, either I blow my head off or I go out and face this shit. And I went out and faced that shit. And uh, you don't want to do that. Trust me. Don't don't ever um, don't threaten yourself with a gun because a SWAT team will show up at your place and and they will fucking tackle your ass like you're a fucking armed suspect. Even though I emptied the shotgun out, left it in like three rooms back before I went out the front door. Um, it's. I'll never forget it. It was the, one of the craziest fucking experiences of my life. But when I went there in Missouri, I went there on purpose because I knew I knew there was something fucked up in my brain. I needed to get it fixed. So I went and did that. And then it, even after that, after I learned those skills and, and learned the things I did, it still took me, it took me like three or four months of sitting by myself writing and listening to music and, and meditating and just thinking and and working on self on self stuff to oh shit okay I thought that message just fucked me up um to develop the new mindset I needed to to become who I am today. This was like between October of 2016 and February of 2017. It was like four months of self, hard self work. Um, I mean, I had my brother Cindy and Billy with me uh, there, but I mean, I spent a lot of time by myself doing the work that I needed to within myself, within my heart, my mind to change who I was and change my way of thinking and become the positive person that I became that summer. And even after my life took a total shit and then my life got even worse and I lost, started losing my eyesight and my health took a shit and I couldn't walk and I was going blind. And I'm still one of the most positive people people know because it's all in how you think. So when you, even when you think shit's so bad that there's no fucking, nothing's going to get better, it will. If, if you, if you take the time to make it get better and you let you bear, bear with it through the, the hard time, the hard time may be a day. The hard time may be a week. It might be a month. It might be four months, but you just got to bear. You got to bear with it. You got to, you got to dig your feet in and just go at it. And, and I did it without medicine. That's what, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, and it wasn't like, Oh, let me, let, let's just get drunk and everything's going to be good. No, that, that actually makes things worse. Um, I mean, did I drink after that? Yeah, I did. In fact, shit, after, um, after I got my job at MVP and all that, man, I was fucking drinking a lot. But um, that was just, that was for fun. Um, but it had nothing to do with coping with what was going on inside me anymore. I had all that shit. I was, man, I was the happiest fucking person in the world. So the summer of 2017 was the best fucking summer of my life. And I did a lot of drinking, but I also helped a lot of people through a lot of shit. And I was there for a lot of people. And I went through some shit myself, but it, I came out over top of it. And I wasn't wasn't relying on alcohol to get me through it. I, you know, I, I was just working fucking 70 hours a week. Wanted to drink afterwards, whatever. Shit, man, when you're... Whatever, I don't need to explain it. Um, just drugs and alcohol aren't going to fix your fucking problems. That's all I got to say. Um, now, as far as big pharma medicine, I suggest not going down that route. If you're on something right now and, and it's working for you, definitely don't be like, oh, well, Justin says I don't need that, so I'm going to stop taking it. No, don't. That's no, I'm not. Um, now if you want to get yourself off it and go down a different route, I can help you with that. Um, along with your doctor's help too. 
I will, I'll say that right now. I'm not saying, call me, stop taking your medicine, we're going to get this shit taken care of. Um, no, definitely, it's, uh, once you're on shit like that, you definitely should um, be under supervised care. Um, but I would rather see my friends and other folks not under Big Pharma's umbrella of just fucking doping people up on their fucking medicines, fucking with the brain chemicals when you control your brain chemicals. You control your mind. You're in charge of your brain. You're in charge of your brain. You do your thinking. You're a free thinking individual. So, um, yeah, I just saw that video earlier and I thought, it just made me think, she was talking about how medicine's been so great, medicine's good, medicine, medicine this, medicine that. And I was thinking, medicine's not always the answer. Um, and I know people see that and they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go to a psychiatrist and get some Zoloft now. Don't fucking jump on that bandwagon. There's there's other routes. Especially try the non-medicine route first. If that doesn't work, then maybe you need to go to the next step. Um, I've talked so many people out of suicide too now and gotten so many people off so many drugs and shit. Um, it's not funny. Um, I'm not a professional, but I'm here to help. Um, just keep that in mind. Just keep, keep in mind that you're not alone though. There's a ton of people out there. Whether you're on something or you're not, um, you don't need to be. Maybe, I mean, maybe you do. I mean, there's certain cases where people do need to be, but um, there are there are ways around it, and I would rather see people not not just being medicated. Uh, go read the book Prozac Nation, shit like that. Um, that's it for now. So um, I love you guys, and I'll speak with you next time.